Hi everyone, it is time for a new video and today I'm finally bringing you my video where we talk about my favorite adult romances of 2021 and I did actually talk about some of my favorite books already in a different video so I'm going to link that down below but that one was only for physical books. So today I'm going to be talking about adult romances that I read not in a physical format. This is not in any particular order. Um, it's kind of in the reading order, a little bit out of it, but like roughly. And I just adored all of these books. I want everyone to read it. And I also like featured them in a lot of vlogs, honestly, most of them. So if you are like interested in watching some vlogs and hearing more in-depth thoughts and like my journey reading those, I'm going to try to link those down below. But anyways, let's just get straight to all the books that I loved in 2021 that I think you should absolutely pick up. So the first one is actually the first book that I read last year and I am super picky about um, the books that I read as my first and last book of every year and it's just something that is really meaningful to me <laughs> and I knew I would adore this book and I actually featured it in one of my favorite vlogs I've ever done which was reading Fadwa's all-time favorite books and this became an all-time favorite for me and I just feel like People have really slept on the series and I need more people to read it even though it came out quite a while ago now. And did I even say the name of the book? Did I say the name of the book? <laughs> um, it is Wrong to Need You by Alicia Rye and like where do I even begin? So this series is like forbidden romances. It's kind of like a second chance slash best friends to lovers romance where the heroine is a single mom and she actually has a child with the hero's brother who passed away, which I feel like when you hear it described like this, it feels kind of weird, but the two of them, the hero and the heroine, always used to have a super strong bond, and it was just kind of like the whole, like, right person, wrong time situation, and her and the, like, father and ex-husband um, didn't really fully work between them, and so I feel like it didn't feel wrong or weird at all when it comes to that. But, like, the this book and this series are really angsty, and I sometimes struggle with angsty books, like, I don't always have the capacity, but when I do, <laughs> they are some of my favorites, because, you know, like, there's obviously going to be a happy ending in the end, and, like, that makes me get through it, and so it's definitely angsty, but just, like, so emotional and so beautiful, and I was so beyond invested in the main characters, and I just absolutely loved it, and it was just incredible, and, like, steamy, and... Um, they had such a strong connection and it was just perfection for me. Like I adored it and I need more people to read it. <laughs> and the other book that I also had to include is actually the last one in this series because I did read the first book the year before and so that I actually read it immediately after Wrong to Need You which also says a lot because I don't really binge series almost like ever and so like I was like I need more right away <laughs> and so I absolutely loved Hurts to Love You also and I don't know I feel like if I had to choose I probably loved Wrong to Need You a little bit more but I also just adored this as well so this basically has the forced proximity trope where the two of them I don't know if they actually share a room, I think maybe something like that, um, because of this, like, wedding party, and, you know, that I, like, forced proximity is one of my favorite tropes ever. It's basically that the heroine in this is just, like, super rich, and she's an heiress from a super, like, fancy family, and the hero, like, works for their family, which is, like, a big no-no in this, like, super fancy family, <laughs> and so it's kind of forbidden because of that, and they, you know, feel like they can't be together because of that and that like slight um that like power imbalance and all of that but they have incredible chemistry and like it was just just like honestly it was just as incredible as wrong to need you and it was just romantic and intense and emotional and steamy like all of those things that i just adore in romance and it was amazing and like talking about these books i need to reread them <laughs> Because, like, I read them over a year ago at this point, you know, and, like, I need to read them again. Like, I desperately need to get physical copies of this whole series and binge read it again. But seriously, if you love angsty, emotional, steamy, romantic story romances, you have to read this series. I just love it so much. The next book that I have here is a book that I already talked about in the other video. Okay, <laughs> so the next actual book is The Intimacy Experiment 
by Rosie Dannon. So, oh my god. When I read The Roommate, which is the first book in this series, I really fucking enjoyed it. And it was actually on my 2020 favorites. Um, but, like, I really loved that one. And um, it was great, you know? But this one, literally, like, I fell in love. Like, it was just, like, absolutely incredible. Like, this is definitely, like, up there in my god tier books. This was just amazing on so many levels and like I don't know I don't even know how to like talk about this book to be honest because like I just I don't know how to like it is about um Naomi and Ethan and Naomi is a sex worker who um we see actually in the first book where I really didn't like her she irritated me so much but in this book like I fell in love with her because she is like she's one of the strongest heroines I've ever read about. She has like the best character development ever and like the journey that she goes on like emotionally is so powerful and I just loved her so much and I loved Ethan as well but I do like Naomi in this like stole the show for me and so she basically is looking for a job where she can like do like sex education and that kind of thing and no one wants to like hire her anywhere and so she's really struggling to like be able to do that and then there's this guy who approaches her who's like I want you to talk about intimacy at my synagogue <laughs> and she's like what the fuck absolutely not and she actually comes from a jewish family but she has a really complicated relationship with the religion because of like you know being a sex worker and like that whole thing and so it explores that as well and so she ends up having this class on intimacy and relationships and it is just absolutely incredible like it, it's such a strong amazing romance that like completely like it made me swoon it took over my heart it was absolutely incredible but at the same time like it has some absolutely like it has some super important like messages and just again like Naomi's journey was so strong the book just hit me so hard on so many levels and I need to stop talking about it but I need everyone to read this and the only reason why I don't have a copy yet is because I wasn't able to get like the American edition yet and I really hate the UK cover, to be honest. And so, like, the second that I can get the copy, I'm getting it, I'm rereading it, I'm annotating it. Like, it is perfection. It is incredible. And just read it, please. <laughs> the next one, of course, we have to have Talia Hibbert on the list. And that is with The Roommate Risk by Talia Hibbert, obviously. <laughs> so, this book is actually, this had, like, a rebrand um because like I read it before the rebrand when it was called Wanna Bet but Talia changed the cover and the title to The Roommate Risk. Basically The Roommate Risk it's called that because it is about two best friends who become roommates and you know again forced proximity, best friends to lovers and Talia just does romance like no one else and this again was a book that is like got to your perfection. I also like since it had the rebrand I really want to get the physical copy so I can reread it and just like, oh my god. <laughs> and like, just, it was just swoony and romantic and steamy and fucking wonderful. And like, I just, there's nothing more I need to say. It was just perfection and um, I adored it. So yeah. <laughs> the next book we have here is finally actually a historical romance. And now that I look at it, I don't know if I have another one, which, no, I must have another one. But I need more. Like, that is one thing that I really need to read more of this year, which is historical romance. But I absolutely adored Scoundrel of My Heart by Lorraine Heath. So this book is the first book that I actually read by Lorraine Heath. And it was the kind of experience when I was like, you know, I know this is the first book that I read by the author, but she's a new all-time favorite. Like, I don't care. Like, she is a new all-time favorite author by author for me. And since I have read multiple of her books now, um, that has proven right. <laughs> um, and just like, oh my god, this book was just, again, like, I'm sorry I'm gonna repeat myself a lot, because there's obviously, like, a clear pattern. <laughs> 
And all of these books made me swoon and I fell in love with the characters and it was just fucking amazing. So I hope that's not too annoying. The heroine in this book has to marry a titled gentleman to be able to get her inheritance. And she of course falls in love with a guy who is absolutely unsuitable and like wrong for this whole purpose. And it all goes from there and it was just everything. And I actually have the physical copy of the second book, which is like one of the main books that I'm like looking forward to reading really soon. And yeah, I just adored it. There's nothing else that I need to say. Just read this book and Lorraine Heath. And yeah, <laughs> the next book is one that I read for a video where I read Nick's from Nick of the Books, um, books that she recommended to me. I can't talk anymore. And like, oh my God. So the book is Rebel Hard by Nalini Singh. And I, I said it in that video. I think this is like this. I really don't like this cover. However, the book on the inside is just everything. Like, <laughs> I'm looking at my Goodreads review where I, re I literally described it. The only thing that I wrote in my review is PERFECTION in all caps. So that is all that you need to know. <laughs> um, but anyways, like the plot of this is that the heroine basically agrees to this arranged marriage and then she meets this um, guy and they have a spark and everything. And then they find out that he's actually the guy that she has the arranged marriage to. And then she kind of like starts rethinking that whole thing because she's not sure if she's ready to get married. And that's kind of where it all begins. And just, I felt like this was one of the like sweetest, most caring romances um, that is at the same time just super romantic and steamy. And like the communication was wonderful and like the understanding between them and just all that was just, it was amazing. It was incredible and I loved it and I highly recommend you read this. I know that most people um, read Nalini Singh's Paranormal Romances, which I haven't yet, but I, I don't know what, like, I, this is the only contemporary one I've read so far, so I don't know how, like, if the others are as good, but this one is just everything. Don't let the cover deter you from reading it. The next book is Hot Copy by Ruby Barrett, which, like, I've talked about it before, and I love it. I love it so much. It was another situation where this is, I think this is Ruby's debut, and so it was like obviously the first book that I read by her and it was just like I am in love I need every single book that Ruby writes and she has a sapphic one coming soon and like I am desperate to read that one immediately and I obviously cannot wait but um this book hot copy is a office romance which you know that I love I feel like a lot of office romances are just kind of like super romanticized and I don't think that's wrong and like I do enjoy those as well that are just more about like the fantasy and whatever but this book does deal with some like issues in the workplace and things like that that's like part of the story the hero basically starts working for the heroine she has this like super icy unapproachable um, reputation and people um, like insult her a lot and it's the kind of thing that you know they call her like a bitch and like other worse things and they start off on the wrong foot because the hero kind of like laughs at a terrible joke on her expense but then they slowly get to know each other and um just I loved them so much and I was just I was so invested and it was once again super fun and steamy and they had such a strong connection. If you love office romances, you need to pick it up and just please read it. I love it so much and yes. <laughs> so the next book is actually another historical romance where I fell in love with another author <laughs> and that is Love is a Rogue by Lenora Bell. So this book has a class difference. Um, the heroine is a Duke's sister and the hero like works for their family. A part of the plot is basically like saving a bookshop and there's this group of like female friends who all like talk about things that aren't related to like marriage <laughs> and relationships. They have this thing that you know like they talk about literally everything else and then the romance is absolutely wonderful and like that the combination of all of those things just like worked perfectly for me and I loved it so much and like I also really want to get a copy of this one when I can because it is it's, it's beautiful and I loved it and I need to read Lenora Bell's backlist as soon as possible. Um, the next book is Pretty Face by Lucy Parker, which I also read for the video that I mentioned where I read books that Nick recommended. 
and I fell in love with this immediately. It is about Luke and Lily who are basically like Lily is an actress and she starts she starts working in this play that um, Luke is directing and so this has like celebrities and hate to love there's an age gap and it has a london setting and like so many books so many things that i absolutely love and i am absolutely going to be reading this series super soon i also have another book by lucy parker that i, that, that I just really want to read and i just adored it and highly 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 recommend it and it really solidified the fact that i love books about celebrities especially actors so yeah <laughs> the other book that i actually read in that video is can't help falling by cara bastone i loved this obviously <laughs> and this one was really emotional and sweet and in this book basically the hero becomes the guardian of his younger sister who um is like a part of the foster system and the heroine was in the foster care system herself and so the hero doesn't really know what to do with her and you know like obviously she is really struggling the sister i mean and seraphine the heroine like ends up helping out and she obviously can like relate to what tyler's sister is going through and so she really helps with that and they also like the two of them have a slightly um bad like first interaction and then they grow closer and just like I just adored it like I loved it and I absolutely recommend it and I actually have two other books by Kara that I have to mention really quickly that like that's actually the first two that I read by Kara Bastone that I fell in love with like immediately and I have never had like this experience with other books before and I'm going to get to that and explain it. <laughs> so that is Call Me Maybe and Sweet Talk. So since I've been talking for so long, I'm not going to describe the specific plots of these and they're like the same kind of story, obviously like different, but I loved both of them in the same way. And so they basically like first came out as Audible Originals and it's basically like a really specific type of narration that it's like written for audio and I think that at least Call Me Maybe has a physical like ebook format um, if you like can't or don't listen to audiobooks but I listened to both on audio and like it has like a narrator for both of the main characters but also like sound effects and like it's super focused on dialogue and everything and it's just incredible like I never thought that like first of all like not only is it like the audiobook experience was amazing but at the same time like in that format I would expect it to be hard to make a super like strong romance but the romances in here were incredible i was so invested the like story is so different from anything that i've read before and it was just incredible like i <laughs> loved it so much and like if you listen to audiobooks you have to listen to these on audio like seriously it is an amazing experience but even if you don't like you have to read them also i'm absolutely heartbroken and devastated because i only have one book left to read by cara bastone and like I need more like I need 10 more and it breaks my heart I've been avoiding reading it because I hate the thought of not having any more books so <laughs> yeah um we have only two more books left um so the next one is a very popular book honestly like one of the few popular books that I actually read that like so many people were hyping up that I actually ended up loving and that is The Love Hypothesis by Ali Hazelwood. So it is basically, I don't even know if I need to describe the plot of this one because so many people have talked about it, but it is, the heroine is a PhD candidate and she falls in love with Adam who is a professor who has a terrible reputation and they fake date and things go on from there and it is just an amazing romance and I had so much fun with it and Ali Hazelwood has a lot of books coming out this year which makes me so happy and I'm definitely a big fan now like just like everyone else like I'm not gonna lie it is worth the hype and I loved it <laughs> and the last book last but not least seven days in June by Tia Williams so I am so happy that I decided to do the video where I read the Goodreads Choice Awards romance picks and one of them was also the love hypothesis but I think that like that one I was gonna read no matter what because like it was really hyped and like it sounded really good you know like yeah <laughs> but for this one I mentioned it in that video like this cover I think is looks super a lot like women's fiction 
or like literary fiction. And I don't read literary fiction. Really strong like emotional journeys of the main characters and like their individual journeys, but it is a romance and it has like, it is a romance. Uh, so like it was just like absolutely incredible. Like there were so many super like, <laughs> It is told in two timelines and it's basically a second chance romance and the heroine is a single mom and the two main characters are reunited after all this time and like when they were younger they had this incredible like you know experience together but then things fell apart and now they're older and um it also has chronic illness representation and it is just like there are so many extremely impactful powerful things in this book and it's such a beautiful, incredible romance. It definitely has, like, a star-crossed lover's vibe. And it's just, like, this book, I was like, the two main characters are meant to be together. And if they don't end up together, the world is going to fall apart. And it was just so incredible. <sighs> and I need everyone to read it. And also, the two main characters are both writers. And, you know, I love books about writers. Like, that is just the cherry on top. So absolutely adored this one i need every single person to read it it is a romance it does have a lot of like emotional components to it but it didn't take away from the story at all as someone who always wants more co romance content like this book gave me everything i wanted and so much more and it's like this book like i need to get a copy i need to annotate it once again i am rereading it this year i'm putting it out there and it is just incredible and i need everyone to read it so i am finally <laughs> gonna shut the fuck up i don't like i can't talk i i can't talk oh my god i can't talk anymore clearly yeah but these are my top favorite romances of 2021 please check them out i love them all with my whole fucking heart and um yeah so that's it if you made it this far in the video leave a the like kiss lipstick emoji like the one that's like the lipstick print not print like whatever you know hopefully you know what what i mean <laughs> um but yeah so thank you so much for watching have a great day and i'm gonna see you soon bye